Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, O God, my Savior, for you have looked with favor on your lowly servant. Christmas is almost here. We're going to be greeting the church this afternoon. Uh, we already have the trees up. Uh, but our celebrations begin in earnest on Friday. But today, until then, we are still in the midst of Advent, the season of expectant waiting. And so today, our gospel lesson tells us a story of two extraordinary pregnant women waiting for the births of their children. Waiting might imply uh, a sense of being passive, but pregnancy is hardly a passive experience. A mother's whole body is engaged in nurturing the child in the womb and preparing for its birth into the world. And Mary and Elizabeth's bodies were busy with this great work, but they were also occupied in other ways, along with all the work of running a household, uh, which was quite hard in their context. As the Gospel tells us, in those days Mary set out and went paced to visit Elizabeth and her husband Zechariah, traveling from her home in Galilee to Judea. There are many reasons why Mary may have set out and went with haste, perhaps to escape gossip in her hometown over her pregnancy, perhaps to get some distance from her fiancé Joseph, who perhaps was still struggling, uh, coming to terms with the situation of her miraculous conception, perhaps because she wanted to get to her cousin as quickly as she could, because Elizabeth was, as the Gospel says, um, advanced in years, and her pregnancy might be hard. So, yes, Mary and Elizabeth were very busy women, going about their lives and actively waiting for something that would make them even busier, newborn children. And yet, even with full domestic lives, they would have felt the impact of the outside world on their families and households. Mary and Elizabeth were marginal figures in their society. Women, residents of small provincial communities, colonized people living under the rule of the Roman Empire, and their status on the margins gives us perspective on the Gospel's message for uncertain times. You see, Mary and Elizabeth, I believe, uh, through their faithful response to anxious times, serve as a model for us. Their children, Jesus and John, were born in a land firmly under the heel of Roman rule, where per periodic rebellions ended in brutal massacres by the occupying forces. When they were carrying their children, Mary and Elizabeth could not know all that the future would hold, but they knew that they were going to give birth to children in a time of injustice, uncertainty, and anxiety. The commentator, a scholar, Naveen Saras, writes, Mary's Magnificat echoes the social upheaval and economic exploitation of the day. The Romans economically exploited the Jews and took advantage of their natural resources. Those who were socially impacted by Roman imperialism experienced poverty, hunger, and disease. The Jews could barely subsist from day to day. They longed for the Messiah to bring some form of physical and spiritual healing. So, with all of that, Mary could have turned inward. Who could blame her? But just as she said yes to the miracle of a fatherless child, she sang out in praise to God, who she trusted would bring about a change in the world. She said, For you have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me. And holy is your name. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. Mary's song acknowledges that 
all is not right with the world. The planet, her community itself, was divided into rich and poor, powerful and lowly. But Mary had faith that God would make all things right, that God would reverse the injustices of the world. And so she praised God. And then she went about her life, raising her child with her values. I believe that Mary serves as an example to us in times of injustice, uncertainty, and anxiety, keeping her eyes open to the world, the pain of the world, but not giving up hope. Instead, she responds with prayer and song, and then she takes action, living her life and working for a better world. Now, making the world a better place can and probably usually does start at the micro level in our homes, in our communities. We work for social justice first by making sure children know right from wrong. We work for reconciliation among all people, people of different beliefs, different races, different religions, first by becoming friends and acquaintances of people of diverse backgrounds. Change begins at the local level with small steps. And it begins with prayer. Notice that Mary's song is a song of praise. It's a prayer. And I really do believe that prayer is a faithful response to injustice. Prayer ideally inspires us to take action, but prayer itself is an action. Because the goal of prayer is to align our hearts and minds with the divine heart and mind. And as we experience unity with God, we become one with our fellow human beings, the children of God. As Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, as you prepare to march, meditate on the life and teachings of Jesus so that we can be aligned. As we prepare ourselves to receive the gift of God incarnate, God among us, this Christmas, I pray that we'll do so in the spirit of Mary and Elizabeth and their active, expectant waiting. God comes to us at Christmas as a vulnerable baby in need of love and protection. And God invites all of us to join in the birth of Christ's kingdom and the nurturing of God's movement for peace and love and justice. Over 2,000 years ago, Mary prayed to God, knowing that God would bring justice to an unjust world. The world is still unjust. It is still waiting for the fulfillment of the reign promised in the first coming of Christ. When Christ comes again at the end of the ages to redeem the world and transform it fully into the image of God, may Christ find us actively, expectantly waiting. Only Christ can fully usher in God's reign of love, but we can participate in the birth of this new world through our prayers for peace, our cries for justice, and our songs of hope. I believe that what we do here in this church deeply matters. And then when we walk out these doors, we go out into the world to spread the good news of what happens here. We begin with our families, friends, and local communities. And as we share our love for one another, we participate in the building of God's reign around the world. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, O God, my Savior, for you have looked with favor on your lowly servant. God has looked with favor on all of us. God has given us the gift of the divine child, the Son of God, 
God's very self. And God has also given us the gift of sharing in the building up of the kingdom of heaven here on earth. May we, like Elizabeth and Mary, make room within ourselves for God's reign of justice and love. May we, like Elizabeth and Mary, actively and expectantly await the coming of the kingdom through our prayer, our praises, and our actions. Amen.